Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. Hi. Hey. What's up? Nothing. What's going on? Just, you know, drinking water. Same. It's so hard to remember to do, right? It's really hard, especially when you stay up at night eating eight s'mores alone. Irie's going to be pissed when she finds out there's no more chocolate left and that I've eaten all of her marshmallows. And graham crackers. Jesus There's still graham crackers. (laughs) But yeah, I ate eight s'mores. I woke up this morning and I felt like shit. You always do this. I literally was like, why do I feel hungover? I was like, sugar, sugar hungover. Oh, no, dear. That's but not- during the moment, you couldn't have asked me to stop. Like, I would have cursed you out. It was fucking amazing. S'mores are the shit. Extra crispy. Melt the chocolate before. I put the chocolate either in the microwave or a pot. This is just a life hack. Mm-hmm. Melt it before. Don't try to melt the chocolate with... Don't, don't, I don't the, like... The, 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 I hate when the chocolate is hard. It's because the, like, the boiling temperatures for both are different. Different. You gotta, like, the chocolate's gotta melt longer. Yeah. And I've tried to, like, make my own technique where, like, I cut you a stu- slit. You stuff it I in. I stuff it in. I think I taught you that. It falls out every yeah, time. It's not well. It just doesn't do it. And so what I do is I just <laughs> take one extra step, melt the chocolate glaze it all over the graham cracker uh-huh. and then I make it extra crispy. Okay, I'm really passionate about this. <laughs> it was really good. That's all I know. Okay. But I felt like well, I hope today. it was worth your hangover. It was, it was. It was. But, you know, starting tomorrow, I'm going to start working out with my trainer and Hollywood? Told, Hollywood. Is that his name? No, his name is Six. Oh, okay. Sorry. Cammie. He's, oh, he's the Hollywood abs though, right? Yeah. Cammie okay. Crawford, our guest from Relationship, she recommended him to me and he's actually a block from here. So it works out. But he told me I can't drink coffee, which is absolutely not fucking happening. And I told him that. And he was like, how bad do you want? Blah, blah, blah. What does coffee have and to do? And I was like, I thought, that's, that's what skinnier? I said. I was like, what does coffee have to do with my six pack? Wait, what is this con- What is this consultation where he yelled at you in this voice? He did You it. cannot he drink. He did it. He was like, I drink tea. I drink green tea. And I don't like the way it tastes. But I, it's about what we put in our body. It's the input. I said, nigga, listen. One cup of coffee is not going to like derail my workout plan. Do the rest of your job and I will drink my one cup of coffee. Weed, coffee, non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Well, okay, speaking of putting things in your body, I <laughs> I think I need to go plant-based because I already knew this because I don't believe we're supposed to be consuming animals. I don't think it's kar- karmically <laughs> not this well. Can you shut lie. the fuck up? I, this is you, a fucking I lie. literally let you talk about fucking passionately about Cause s'mores. Because I'm speaking for ten, truth. For I'm ten, speaking truth. I this is our first fight. It's <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up. I have important things to say. Okay. If you want to talk about marshmallows and chocolate, I can't for, wait to see you on this journey. Go ahead, continue. First of all, let the record show. Fuck you. Okay. Second of all, like I was saying, two things. Okay. First thing is, I uh, I forget to drink water because my bladder is very weak. Does anyone else get like very close to the bathroom and then like pee a little bit in their panties because your bladder won't make it? That happens to me often. Okay, two, I was online Instagram and I saw this video of a um, a whale. There's people on a boat. They drop their phone in the ocean, and a little orca whale swims up to the boat and gives the phone back. Yes. That's crazy. I know. That's why I'm not going to eat fish even because, wow, am I a terrible I mean, human but, being? But why orca? And who's eating orca? No, like, why, the, is no, that, no why was that the determining relax, factor? Relax. It wasn't an orca. It wasn't like it was a a Tarzan different. feeding a baby pig to fucking his snake. Did you see that video? That video literally traumatized me on the internet last week. <laughs> the, the, um, it was, I didn't even watch the video. It was like, you know, like on reels, it'll just be like a, sc- actually, was it a reel? It was like a screenshot of a baby pig. And his snake looking at it, and he was holding it over, and he was like, "Y'all eat pig every day. What's the problem with no, like no, nature's I'm, natural I, I, progression?" I'm fine with I'm fine with nature doing its nature. I feed my snake when do, mice. When do snakes find pigs? Where? In, when? The, in the wild, bitch. Mm. Oh, also, this somebody told me that she had a snake, or who, I don't know who the fuck told me this. They had a snake that in the snake. In the snake cage, there was a little bowl of fish, and the snake would just come grab the fish and eat the fish out of the. Lo- I was like, so, okay, whatever. I. So anyway, the orca has uh, no, it, it you, was, you need to be plant based. It wasn't an orca. It was a, let me tell you the right a manatee. No, it wasn't a manatee. It was fuck. I thought it a was dolphin. Like, no, this is very important. <laughs> what the fuck? I thought I fucking posted this. Oh, wait, sorry. God, it's so important that I, this is why I'm vegetarian. Oh, it was a beluga whale. You guys want to see it? Oh my god! Wait. 
wow. I told you. Not your caption, oh my God, I'm going plant based. <laughs> what? And the point and the point is I'm not I'm not eating beluga. The point is p- animals, sea creatures, all animals have spirits and they are conscious. How you just f- got you just you just figured that out? No, bitch, I've known it my whole life. It's been a struggle because I'm greedy. But the point of the matter is I saw this beautiful video this morning and this is what the internet is for. So now when Spreading I wanna, love. So now when I want to go to vegetarian restaurants, you're not gonna give me shit. Nope. Yeah, because every time I like want to do that, Jamila's like, <sighs> well, I, you know what, you guys, I grew up vegetarian and it was so insisted upon in my household that as an adult, I wanted to eat meat. And so now I'm crazy. Are both your parents vegetarian? My, my mom eats like chicken, but my dad has never. Mm. So and he's the primary cook in my household. Mm. So I, growing up, I was forbidden because it was they were like, that's disgusting. And so when I would go to people's houses, I would eat bacon. And now there's me. You're like the fried chicken maker of the world. Every any time there's a meal that's going to be made, it's Jamila's making fried chicken you guys i just want everyone to know if any husbands if any potential husbands are listening i'm a great cook i can fry chicken i can make macaroni and cheese cornbread greens this is crab that, cakes this, anything you want me to make i can make i'm very domesticated if anyone was listening like wow they're so wild jamila's also domesticated this is um, this is an advertisement i'm not but i can give you a massage and i can order postmates <laughs> okay anyway let's <laughs> You guys, we're not even high. We're just not talking about shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, moving ha- along. Uh, hi, we have a guest here. <laughs> it's just, you might hear her giggling in the background. She's like, these bitches don't shut up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, we have Les from Balanced Black Girl Podcast. Thank, Thank you for you joining for us. Me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sitting through that ridiculous conversation. Are you plant-based? No, I'm not. Are you Are married you now? No. Are you married? Do you have anything to offer any of our male listeners? <laughs> do, do you want to do you want to put out your uh, audition tape because I just did. <laughs> are you in a you have a re- are you in a relationship? No, I'm not. Dating? Yeah. Are you from LA? I'm not. I'm from Seattle. <laughs> Seattle. Mm-hmm. But I live here now. I, I'm always interested in black people from Seattle. Like, where, what are we doing over there? Being terrible. That's why I live here. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend just moved there. Nishka. Oh, I know. I know. She's from there, though. She is from. She is from there. Yeah, I, I guess because I'm a black girl from um, a white area. I'm always wondering, like, every, it's hypocritical because I'm like, black people are there. It's like, bitch, black people are barely where you're from, <laughs> <laughs> and you came out just okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't have kids, right? I do not. No. Mm. What's your sign? Leo. Oh, my my son is a Leo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know your whole? It's a good time. Do you know your whole I thing? I do. What is it? Taurus moon, Libra rising. What else? Mercury, Virgo, Venus, Libra, Saturn, Capricorn. That really tears me up. Those are the only ones I can remember. You're very like head. grounded. You have a lot There's of a lot of Earth. Earth. I have a mm. whole lot of Earth. A lot yeah. of Virgo, a lot of Capricorn, Taurus. Mm. Yeah, I love that. It's like my daughter; she's very earthy as well, mm-hmm. and I'm very water fire. Mm. I need to figure out the rest of my shit. I need to know my Venus and shit. My, ver- my Venus yeah. is Scorpio. I feel like I have like everything. It's not balanced. It's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough water though. I feel like I could use a, a little bit more water. Well, here we are, baby. Have feelings. <laughs> Here's your water. It's us. <laughs> <laughs> Come hang out with us. You'll Perfect. eventually channel your inner water. Perfect. That's what I need. I need more like feelings. Well, no, we have feelings, but sometimes we don't. <laughs> I feel like I have too many feelings, and so I just have had to learn how to like chill them the fuck out. Yeah. So then it comes off as if I have none. That's a good one. I think when you have too many feelings, you're just like, this is too much. Fuck them all. That's how I feel. I'm like, too much. Fuck it. Get it away from me. I don't want. Never mind. <laughs> But as a Scorpio, though, I feel like Scorpios are good at appearing aloof, even if that's not how they really feel. For mm. sure. Mm. You think I'm aloof? You think I appear aloof? I feel like I feel like you can wear a better poker face if you don't want someone to know that you're affected. Whereas I can, but first I have to really be pushed to a limit to my ego comes out. Because at first I'll be like, why? What? Come back. Love me. <laughs> Like Whereas Erica would be like, fuck you. <laughs> and then she'd like, call me like. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. I'm like, can you believe you said that to me? Um, I, feel like I, I feel like my poker face is pretty much consistent throughout the day all the time. So I'm trying to like unpoker my face more. I'm not unpoker this my face. This is me unpokering my face. I'm going to just do the whole podcast like this. Don't do that. I don't like it. It's kind of scary. Oh my God. Me. We should do a podcast where I'm you and you're me. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I don't know how to do that. Like, I'm Mila. <laughs> hey. 
Relax, put your titty away. Yep, see? <laughs> You're always showing that titty. <laughs> it's fine. I Everyone's know. seen that titty, even on Instagram. So what? It's just who I am. I just love it. It's just, it just wants to fight it. I don't know. That titty is not camouflage. <laughs> I am nice. I'm smiling. <laughs> I love women. I'm a retreat leader. I just want us to like all just like be free and like love each other and like just like who cares if I'm naked? Like just want to be naked and like who cares? It's my pussy. Everyone has one. It's okay to be naked, but everyone doesn't want to be naked with you. <laughs> People aren't gonna like you, but they will like you. It's not their problem. But maybe put your titties away. <laughs> <laughs> Jamila, speak up. I'm the only one speaking loud, even though I'm very aloof and cool. Well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm just chilling. I don't know. It's just, it's just <laughs> All right. Well, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> is wrong with us? <laughs> it's where we're not high. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Uh, affirmations yeah we it's <laughs> affirmation time and today our dear guest is going to shut us the fuck up by bringing <laughs> us a good Keep affirmation <laughs> very much entertained by this conversation the role reversal is funny uh no affirmation i've actually been thinking a lot i saw this meme yesterday that said um something along the lines of like loving myself is also loving my experiences mm. and i have a very hard time with that so I feel like my affirmation would be something along the lines of like, when I honor my experiences, I honor myself mm. or something. When, when I, I honor, honor my experiences, experiences I, I honor, honor myself. myself. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's like not judging yourself through the journey of experiencing yourself. Mm -hmm. And yep. that can be really challenging. I think in the perfect world, a social media world, everyone is like, I who I, even on this podcast like whatever I did it fuck it you know <laughs> even on this podcast <laughs> I did it fuck it you know but there's definitely literally the other day <laughs> we posted this like uh this clip about our this like um goddess, sex, experience. goddess sexual experience we had in, together in Costa Rica mm -hmm. and we posted it and like I was like feeling like wow this is so funny it's so great and then like the next day I was like Jamila should we should we take it down like I, I don't know like is it too much? I'm never going to find a husband. Who's going to respect Wait, me? Wait, actually, I'm going to post the... She put it in voice note. So I'm going to post the voice note in, in, in Patreon because it was so fucking hilarious. She was like, hello? She's like, I don't know. I'm looking at this clip. Is it too much? And she's like, Irie, get away from me. <laughs> hello? Anyway, what I was saying is, she's like, get away from me. <laughs> it's like, this bitch is going through. She was through. trying to listen to my conversation. It was like almost like she knew I was judging myself and she wanted to have like a first seat to my to my insecurity. Like my child knew that I was going through this dilemma and she literally was just like <laughs> She was like, she, the, the, she's like the part the part about us having that three go away. I don't know. Is it too much to just say we're <laughs> I'm like this is I could visualize you running from I her. I was. I was running all over the house, like trying to talk and voice notes to Jamila. And I was like, should we archive it? Let's just archive it. We don't have to delete it. Maybe just take it off our feet and keep it in reels. I was like, and then it's still up. It's still up. I know. <laughs> the next, like a couple hours later, I looked. I'm like, I guess she's I guess she, she's fine. I was like, we posted four times. It's down the feed. No, <laughs> no one can ever find it again. But what but I say that to say is like, even though I enjoyed this experience, like I had so, and I felt so empowered by it. Mm -hmm. There's still a like questioning of myself even this far into my journey in good moms where like our whole you know our whole uh, platform is about kind of just living authentically and being honest about where you're at I still struggle with it yeah. like it's not I haven't I'm not fully healed y'all I didn't like yeah. I'm still doing the work and I think that that's whether you're talking about threesomes on the internet <laughs> or, you know, just dating someone that like didn't serve you. Yeah. And you're like, how the fuck did I do that? Why did I do that? What did I wasted my time? How could I do this to myself? And it's like, well, we learned something. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that I think that that's um, a challenge that I think all of us continue to face. Yeah, I think especially women. And I, I was. <laughs> I had this, I was having these thoughts recently too, like this exact thing. I, I was like judging myself about something and I was talking myself out of the judgment. Like this is a lesson. It, it just, it's a more of a like reflect on how you feel. But then I got high and then I had this like deep high thought and I was like telling Orlando, I'm like, <clears throat> what if we, what if the journey is not like 
linear. It's not vertical. It doesn't like start here and stop here, right? What if the journey, what if we imagine the journey to be a spear, a spear shape like the earth, right? So, cause it started cause I was like, oh yeah, cause I'm grown and I don't make those decisions anymore. And then I was, and he's like, or you do. And we laughed <laughs> and I was like, and then I got deep in my head and I was like, yeah, what if we stopped thinking of the journey starting at A and ending at B, but we started thinking of the journey of the shape of the world, right? And like, maybe you're from a small town, but then you're going to go to Greece and have that experience. And maybe you might pop back in to your small town and you'll be like, ah, oh, that's cool. I don't really like it here. And then you'll go to Africa and then you'll come back. And I was like, but we're never judging ourselves about the places we go back to visit, right? Because we're just visiting it and maybe we'll never go back. Maybe we only go places one time. I'm like, but as we travel this in this shape of the world, then the judgment, I was like, in my mind, I was like, this is so smart. I am a fucking analyst. I'm a fucking philosopher. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, I always say that, babe. I was like, okay, but you don't get this philosophy? Like, when you look at it like that in my mind, when it's round, it's better. Like, I haven't gone back. I've just gone a different place. So I hope everybody understands that visual and it helps you not judge yourself. Because <laughs> it's helped me. Thinking of my journey round and not straight. What are some of the ways in which, like, that affirmation has come up for you? Yeah. Honestly, just the other day, I was, like on the phone crying to my mom because I just was like, uh, my life is like not what I want. And I'm the one who did it. Like <laughs> I made these decisions and now they've got me here. And like, I wish I had a time machine, you know, all that. Um, and I just had to be like, I don't, and this is where I am. So what am I going to do about it? Like, am I going to beat myself up over it or am I going to move through it? And there are some things that I have control over and can change. And there are some things that I can't. And I just, have to accept it and move forward and also kind of finding trying to find the silver lining and the joy and the things that you can't change or like the things that you've judged yourself about right mm -hmm. because the judgment you have to kind of think about where where in my mind have I made this thing bad yeah I was talking to my homegirl today Capricorn and she's been doing some like ho shit <laughs> in her mind <laughs> My weed is here. Can I go get it real quick? Yeah, I'm gonna take okay. telling my story. Okay. And um, she she was like, uh, the shit we prioritize on our show, <laughs> ordering weed at the moment of videotaping. Um, and anyway, she was like. She just she was doing some things that I think I know that she would traditionally judge someone about or mm -hmm. would traditionally be quick to be like, I would never do that. I don't do that. And she, I was like, well, did you enjoy it? And she was like, yeah, I enjoyed it. I was like, girl, maybe this is your season yes. to be a hoe. Yes. And, I was, like, and since, I was like, and since it's your season, you might as well enjoy it. Yes. I'm like, sometimes you guys like everything's not perfect. Like and if you know you're a good person. You don't really have to worry about it. Right. If you're just an overall terrible human being and you want to see people hurt, but if you're not hurting anyone, do what the fuck you need to do. Right. And, and, and like whatever traditionally is thought of as bad. I mean, welcome to good moms, bad choices, bitches. It may not be bad. It actually may be bomb. It yes. actually may be exactly what you needed or need. Questioning. Why do we think things are good or bad? Whose definitions are those? Who, who set the tone for these decisions? Right. right. Like, does that even align with what we want? Exactly. And nothing's bad, honestly. I mean, obviously, like, murder is bad. War is bad. But rape is bad. But I think nothing like in the journey of life there are really no bad decisions because every single decision that you've made I don't even know what decisions you were talking to your mom about are actually what led you to this moment to be like I actually don't I'm not feeling this and had you not gone this route one turn differently you may not you know have come to this this conclusion this at this time and it's exactly where you're supposed to be so I just I I've been also is not an ad. <laughs> I, Ease, I, sorry, I had to step out to go get my Ease delivery. Well, it's an ad now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, 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 I love that. And, and I love that we can have this conversation about not judging yourself. And I, I think me and Erica really wanted to talk about today um, accepting yourself and loving yourself through your fuck ups because we're going to fuck up. And, you know, probably daily and I think like being getting stuck on the on the fuck ups is what really fucks us up you know you have to be able to obviously be self-aware and don't 
don't do the same shit over and over and over and over and over and over and then complain. Or do. Oh, or yeah. do, but like, but then complain about it and bitch right. about it. And right. I'm one of those people, like, I'll do some shit five times and then cry. Because I knew better, you know? But, it, and, and it takes people longer. But eventually, you're going to stop doing the shit that you said you didn't want to do. So I, 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 th- I think it's a very important lesson, especially for women, especially for moms, to to chill out on yourself and, like, um, forgive yourself like you'd forgive your toddler. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, think, I mean, I think that if you're not a mom, though, the reparenting yourself conversation almost feels a little bit more difficult because, I mean, and you as someone who's not a parent, like, you haven't had to give a child that grace almost and, have, and, that, and that unconditional love yet. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't have like a, like a, I guess like a, a blueprint to like, what does unconditional love feel like besides like my parent, like the one my parent, like it's a li- it's almost harder almost. I, I, I see the challenges yeah. on both sides. Like I see like, it's really hard for parents to give themselves grace because like they have this responsibility of taking care of this kid and there's so much pressure to rise to the occasion. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, it's like, but you, you, you have this person that you love unconditionally and you're like, wow, I now really understand the idea of unconditional love because like you are like a manifestation of that. Whereas like if you don't have a child, you don't really know exactly. No, I don't want to say everyone feels this way. And please interrupt me if I'm wrong. Um, cause I've had a child now for seven years, but I know before I had a child, it would be really difficult for me to reparent myself. It would be really difficult for me to give myself um, this this grace that I that I might give myself now. Honestly, I think um, I think it's I think having my daughter has made me really more aware of how important it is. And I I think back on like before I had a child when I was also in my early twenties, how hard I was on myself all the fucking time. I read my diary entries and from my past, and I'm like you are so mean to yourself like all the time every year me and Mila are writing this book and so I guess every year I always write on New Year's every New Year's I was such a bitch to myself like I didn't accomplish any of the goals I want to do but this year I swear I'm gonna do it I'm gonna get my shit together I swear to god this is gonna be the year of like I'm not gonna fuck up anymore and it's like yeah, I'd, I had no, like, I guess, foundation on how to do that. So how, I guess my question for you is, how do you do that? Like, how, how, what are some of the ways? I mean, obviously, I know we're all, it's, we're all speaking from a work in progress place. But, yeah. like, what are some of the ways that you do give yourself grace? What are some of the ways that, like, you have that conversation with your mom and you kind of, like, have to accept it and move forward? But, like, it's that's easier said than done. Oh, totally. You know? I mean, what's been helpful for me, and I'm going through this like real time, right? So what's been helpful for me is also letting myself feel it. I mean, as earlier when I was like, water signs help me have feelings, I was joking, but also like not joking Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I'm not the most like emotional person. So even talking to my mom and like letting her know what was going on for me and like crying to her, I mean, in 32 years, I could probably count on one hand the number of times in my life that I've done that. Mm. I was going to ask you about that. I was like, that's so how beautiful you have a relationship with your mom where you felt like you can do that. Cause it's odd that people don't necessarily feel that vulnerable with their parent to, to do that. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if I have had that relationship and not because of her. I think a lot of it has been because of me, because my mom is someone who is amazing and she is very emotionally expressive and so from a young age I felt this pressure to be a little bit more stoic to kind of balance her out Mm. and so I started holding things in at a very young age um, until I finally got to the point where now I'm like I can't anymore I just need to let myself feel it and also not like I'm a overall a pretty positive person but also sometimes it's not the time for a silver lining sometimes you're just feeling it and you want to feel what it is and let yourself Mm -hmm. cry it out and then you can move on to the silver lining but if at the peak of you being upset someone is like but the positive it's like shut up I don't want to hear that I don't want to hear that motherfucking positive I'm sad text me tomorrow about it sad and then we can (laughs) pretend to be happy tomorrow right (laughs) but let me be sad right now and so I think 
that's kind of where I'm at of just actually letting myself feel the feelings because mm-hmm. that earth sign energy is not good about that. You know, though, like speaking of astrology and just like the, the, the agreements we make about ourselves and our personalities, mm-hmm. this is something that like I've been confronting more and more. And we had this conversation with uh, this podcast called Around the Way Curls. Shout out to I Antoinette. And, and um, wait, what's her name? Sheena? She, she, wait. What's her name? Fuck. Antoinette and Shanti. Shanti. Oh my God. I was like, Shiva? Shanti. My bad girl. Um, I was just saying how most of my life I've heard, first of all, you tell someone you're a Scorpio, the immediate reaction is, <gasps> ooh. It's either, oh my God, I love Scorpios, or it's like, ooh, trauma. Um, <clears throat> but what I've heard is just like, oh, Erica's so serious, or um, she's so hard to read. And so, or like, um, she has this very uh, um, big presence when she comes to the room that's intimidating. And so some of these things are compliments to me in ways, but some of them are like things, identities that I don't really want to have. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't like, yes, I, I know that I can be serious. There is a serious side to me, but there's also like a very large playful side to me. And like, there's a, and, and I feel like I've made these agreements about myself who I am emotionally, that I don't necessarily want to identify with anymore. And same like with you, you saying that like you feel like you're not emotional um, and that earth signs can be like unemotional, which I don't disagree with. But I think that ultimately some of the some of these things are choices and some of these things are these expectations that people have labeled us with and that we carry. Yeah. And they're not even ours to carry. Oh, yeah. And then so then we navigate through life in these ways like, okay, well, I'm going to put on my Scorpio badge now. And don't get me wrong. It's helped in ways for sure. Like I've, you know, had boundaries with people that I really didn't need to get close to me. But then there's opportunities that I've that I've missed with people because of how they might have perceived me or how I showed up because how I thought they were perceiving me. And I just feel like one of the big one of the big things that like I'm trying to work on presently right now is like stripping those things away, stripping some of these like Scorpio scorpionic things away Mm -hmm. because I feel like they don't serve me anymore. Yeah. You know, so I encourage you to like really evaluate that part of yourself and like ask yourself, am I not emotional or am I just suppressing? Like, do I suppress because this is what people have told me? I'm supposed to do and show up this way. Oh yeah. You know, without giving yourself permission to actually like move in a different way. And also I think, I think for, um, for women, especially, I know we've been talking about the divine feminine a lot, but showing up in your feminine in your femininity, Mm -hmm. you know, and like not associating, uh, feelings with weakness. Cause for a long time, that's how I felt, you know, Or, you know, feelings with weakness and why I felt that way, you know, and allowing yourself to feel it without judgment. And even, you know, the, there's the, the astrology thing. Oh, I'm a cancer. I'm going to be hypersensitive or I'm this. Is even what, what things people and friends have told you, even people who are very close to you. You know, like I, I was ex- I was I was saying something to somebody the other day and I was like, you know, because I'm 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 wild and da 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 da. And I, I, in my mind, I would told myself, like, stop saying that. Why did you say that? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Yeah. Who told you that, that you're repeating that? Yeah. Because then you're, you're, you're repeating that behavior. You know what I mean? And as women, we have the capacity to be so many things. And it's, it's not fair for us. You know, obviously we all know ourselves, but we're all evolving. And the 30s, bitch, I, I'm evolving so fast. <laughs> I'm not even the same bitch I was last week. <laughs> Literally, we're like... <laughs> Our team was like, we should just pre-record till like May. I said, Jamila was like, bitch, I might be a different person in May. I don't know if we should record that right now because in May I might listen to this episode and be like, who the fuck is that? And it's true. I I mean, obviously there's like foundational things about who we are that are just Mm -hmm. core. But then there's things like I'm I'm open to changing my mind, even about myself, Mm -hmm. even about like these agreements that I've made about who I am. Oh, 100%. And you can show up based on how you feel that day. You know, like, I don't feel fucking friendly today. I don't have to because you think that I'm so friendly, you know, (laughs) like I am. So I don't really have to perform in a way that you know that I'm friendly. But like just honoring that, like, I don't feel like doing that. And that's okay. Like, it's okay to to shift in in where you're at. And and also even when you feel yourself 
like rejecting some emotions I, I always tell people all the time if I'm feeling like I need to be tougher or I need to be this or that I'll channel my friends that I feel like have those traits like damn what would Erica do right now like don't say shit <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> you know but like there there is self-reflection is so such an interesting like introspection is such an interesting like journey it's like you can get lost in it you know and it's just we're constantly I realize we're constantly evaluating ourselves I am it's fucking nuts I'm like I feel this why is it from your childhood no are you sad maybe (laughs) why I don't know feel it am I feeling it should I cry (sighs) can't cry (laughs) like it's just like I think we're so programmed to analyze shit make and a come to a conclusion have this expectation which is it's really just judgment we are constantly trying to evaluate a situation ourselves apply it to our experience and then make sense of it but some shit just don't make sense people don't make sense we're all different we're all having separate existences separate experiences and they all can be the truth so yeah it's- T- speaking on what you mentioned at the top about like the divine feminine and stuff, I was reading today. Um, I follow, do you know Draca Gates is? Draca. Draca? Draca. <clears throat> she's, um, she's a rapper's she, wife. Yeah, but like I hate that. Like she's her own person. Um, she's a wellness farmer. Yeah, oh, she amazing. lives on a farm and like just like has kind of like left, I don't want to say society, but kind of is living life on her own terms yeah. on this farm, living off the land, creating like products and shit. I really want her to come on the show. Girl, if you're listening, if anybody knows Drika, tell her I want her to come on the show. Um, don't but- tell her I said she's a rapper's wife, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, I get that, too. Like, oh, baby mom, you're dead, baby dad. I know that. I know that's why I triggered you. I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, she wrote this post and it was she said uh my entire life i mainly operated in in my masculine not realizing the power in my feminine in being a woman and embracing all that comes with that i understand now that i am a cyclical being it's right for me to experience different emotions throughout the month it's right for me to embrace all those emotions it right it's right for me to be the receiver rather than the giver and it's okay for me to be loving to be nurturing to also receive love to be soft and still get shit done i'm still what some may refer to as a boss main i guess this is like her nickname boss main direct i don't know boss maniac um but i just prefer to be called drika I'm more balanced, but find that I operate out of my feminine more these days. This is not to downplay my masculine because there has to be a balance. But I fear I feel powerful and being true to my feminine nature. So much power in that. And I was like, damn, like that's kind of where I'm at, too, is like as women, we have had to show up as more masculine a lot especially to be taken seriously to get shit done to assert ourselves Mm -hmm. to survive as black women you know and especially like single moms playing both roles like even not having kids just wanting to just be respected in ways and feeling like we have to like have this like I feel like a lot of times and we had this conversation too in Costa Rica with this woman Vanessa about how um the feminist movement is probably can, can be very problematic because it really is like you're a boss I don't need no one and and in fact when you do that you're really tapping a lot into this masculine energy and you're leaving the feminine out of it mm-hmm. Um, and I never really looked at it that way. And I was like, damn, that's fucking profound. Wow. I never really thought about how much masculine energy I'm carrying and how even that masculine energy is why people think certain things about the, even the qualities about me, what I'm talking about, like as a Scorpio woman, like intimidation, hard to read, like some of those things are like masculine tendencies in ways. And I think that me stripping away some of or working to now to kind of strip away some of those things, I'm excited to see how I really show up as a, as my full feminine force that I know I am. And, but I'm like, shit, I don't even know. It's so ingrained in me. I don't even realize I'm doing it half the time. You know, it's like a lot of like checking myself and hoping that like my other friends that are working on their shit are like, Hey bitch, you're doing it again. And like having your friends being really accountability partners for your, for yourself. Do you have like a core girl group or a friend group that like kind of you guys have like checks and balances in ways? I do. I have a couple, thankfully. Um, 
And yeah, I think as we've all gotten older and we've all evolved and life has kind of taken us in different places but keeps us connected, we're all kind of in different parts of our journey. And the more comfortable we get with ourselves, I think the more comfortable we get kind of being honest with one another versus I feel like when you're younger, you just kind of everybody is going with it. Everybody's trying to kind of, I don't know, be accepted Mm -hmm. versus as we get older. I feel like I'm having an easier time like calling in a friend when they need it of like, hey, girl, I noticed this and also being able to receive that when they do it for me. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's something that's been really helpful. I get the receiving part is that's where difficult. Yeah, it's hard, especially when like if you have water, in the not water under the bridge with that friend, but like you, you might be holding your friend to a certain like expectation of who they are and like not letting them grow either. Mm-hmm. Because I always talk about how like people we we really like to like hold people hostage oh, yeah. to like wherever they were even last year. Yes. Yes. Like, we well, you keep people where you they, said yeah. this last year. So mm-hmm. that's who you are now forever. I'm guilty of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about how I think society does that, especially with people in the public eye, like, you know, digging through tweets and saying, like, you said this shit when you were 14. So you're racist. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's like, you got to be racist now forever. (laughs) And I don't I want to do away with that, even especially within, you know, my friendships. I'm guilty of that. I stopped completely listening to Sabrina Claudio after I found out she had racist tweets. (laughs) Totally took her off the playlist. (laughs) I miss her. (laughs) I wish she didn't tweet those things. Well, well, (laughs) well, also it's hard to know because we don't know Sabrina. She might she might still be racist. Right. I'm joking, not joking, but I I I I I, I also think the longer that you've had friends, it's easy to do that both ways. Yeah. And and for me, I think I'm so emotional and attached and shit. I my defense mechanism is like fuck them. I can hold a grudge. That cancer shit, I don't know what kind of crab shit I have going on. I can hold a grudge. And it's really evaluating. Because I think when you do that, we tend to do that to ourselves too. But it's just like allowing people, like, okay, I have a lot of friends. Each one of them is who they are. They have their shit. That irritates me, you know? We all have different friends that have their things. Me and Erica have mostly the same friends. But in the bigger scope of things, like, I'm not going to, do I not want to be your friend over this? No, bitch, I know who you are. So I know how to, like, I I know all of my friends are growing. So we do give our, thankfully, we give. Are you trying to give me that to Ash? Yeah. (laughs) It's out. Um, To, like, just, what was I saying? Fuck. That you, that, you, we have all, we all have different friends and they're all this. They all have different things that irritate, but like, but but it's like, do you, would you rather keep? How much do you value the friendship, or do you need to cut pitches off? Sometimes people can't yeah. stay, yeah. or maybe you know, I love you, but like maybe this is too close to love you. Maybe you need to sit in this house over there, yeah. you know, and like kind of like structuring it that way, and and allowing that those cycles to happen, and it and not you know holding on to it. I'm a holder on to shit. I know that I'm working on that. Like I was mad at my grandma from last year, and we're about to go on a family vacation. And I was like, bitch, you need to release that. She's 80 (laughs) so sad right like why why am i you know like who knows what she's gone through in her life or like all of the shit everyone's gone through shit we're all suffering and and showing up as this person because of the things that we've been through so how can we honor each other in the way like i love you I, i know you and i understand you so like i can communicate what bothers me and still love you past it work through it instead of just letting you go because i'm good for like never mind don't like you anymore I think um, the premise of your podcast, which is, you know, Balanced Black Girl, I think we're all trying to balance. I would love to know, like, what inspired you to start your podcast? And I mean, obviously, because we're all still we're sitting here talking about that we're imperfect humans mm-hmm. and that we don't have it all figured out. I mean, if the name says it all. Good moms, bad choices. <laughs> but I mean, your your podcast is, you know, if you re- if you look at that, you would think, oh, she must have balanced it all. She's got it all balanced. Everything's balanced over there. She must be a Libra of some sort. <laughs> rising, <laughs> rising in Venus, yes. But yeah, can you tell me a little bit about you know what inspired your podcast? I know you've been doing it for three years now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm just a a nerd. I'm a wellness nerd, and I have been for a really long time now. Like, I just geek out over 
learning anything about health, anything about personal development. Like I just, I can't get enough of it. And I love being a student of it. Like I love learning about it. And I realized that a lot of the resources or platforms for wellness information were really led and catered towards white people. And so I would listen to it and I'd be like, okay, some of this information is relevant, but most of it isn't. And I really wanted a space where I could learn from black women who had experiences that I felt like I could relate to, who had wellness expertise that felt relevant to my life. Mm. And I wanted to learn from them. And I felt like the best way to do that was to create a platform around it and share it. That's amazing. Congratulations. You You should come to the Good Vibe Retreat. I would love to. You should. I think a lot of people, too. A lot of people think that the Good Vibe Retreat is for mothers, which it's not. Obviously, Mm -hmm. our demographic is, there's a lot of moms. Yeah. But there's a lot of not moms. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. and, I mean, first for women. (laughs) You know, before we had kids, we were just moms. I mean, just, shit. We were just women, you know. So, yeah. And that in in itself is a whole, a lot. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like that retreat, our retreats, made me recognize the the power we have as teacher and as student yes and the power in the femininity Mm -hmm. and that it's not like I think the patriarchy makes us think that the feminine is this uh like submissive overly emotional Mm -hmm. sensitive impulsive sensitive like needs to be guided taken care of (laughs) cult yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. right right like but, a, a weakness yeah you know but, but like actually we're the ocean you yeah. know like actually we're water actually yeah. it could go both ways because you don't want to fuck with me either I can be very strong and very yeah. cold and and all these things but it's like I, I never received that message so clear than being amongst women I was learning from and yes. also giving to yes. like that that like and just from podcasting, talking to, you yes. know, like oh, I absolutely. feel like I've come into my power in the last like four years so much because I've had the opportunity to exchange yes. with so many women, which it, I, I we didn't start this. We, we I don't think we were thinking as a wellness brand. We weren't even thinking of a brand. We were just like, let's <laughs> talk. But like it is mm-hmm. over, like authenticity, sisterhood, friendship, genuine, real friendship that like we can criticize like constructive criticize accept yeah. hold you know, close to that is mm-hmm. like that is what we're supposed to be doing and that is how we thrive 100 percent. i think something else that i've learned too that's been a shift in thinking for me is that when i first started getting interested in wellness interested in content all of those things it was very much about me it was mm. very much about what i was eating what workouts i was doing my how i felt about my body which is like a whole that's a podcast episode in of itself but how do you feel about your body? Yeah, how do you feel about I your body? I feel good about it now, but I'm saying when I was 20 and started all this, I, I didn't. I f- now I feel great, <laughs> at least for now. It's always changing. but um, I know, it's a journey, all exactly. of it. Exactly. But what I've learned, and especially through podcasting and over the last few years, is just that care and well-being doesn't happen individually. It really does happen collectively. Mm. And it's mm. so, Im- like, me being well Alone. It doesn't matter if you're not well. And if you're not well, like we all need to be well together. Yeah. To be order for here it to mean anything. and to support each other. And yeah. wow, I never looked at it that way. I was just having this conversation with my friend yesterday. Shout out to Ashley. Um, she, we were talking about how I was just saying how like a lot of the things that I do and work that work are because like, I want to try them because like they're yeah. part of like, I don't feel well, maybe this will make me feel better yes. and maybe it'll make you feel better. Let's find out together. Mm-hmm. And when you come from, um, it almost sounds selfish because it's like, I don't want to do this alone. <laughs> <laughs> or like, try it this way. This shit might be better for you, bitch. Um, <laughs> but I think when you come from a place of like, I don't know, just like your own guided intuition of like what your spirit is calling you to do, you're inevitably going to tap into other people's spirits because we all are connected and especially women, especially men too. I don't want to exclude them from the conversation either. I think that's another thing that like kind of has come up too in this work that I'm doing regarding like my femininity and like how much I've excluded the man out of it, but also like taken from him in ways, his masculinity for one, like mm-hmm. really embodying what I think men do to get shit done 
and not wanting them to do it around me. Mm. You know, like I can do this thing that you do, but (laughs) don't do that shit to me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what the fuck? (laughs) How am I going to invite in? First of all, how do I make them feel not excluded from my life and the party? But also like also analyzing my my the fact that I like, why am I single? Not because like there's something wrong with me, but like, am I actually inviting anybody into my space in that way? Am I actually leaving space for that? You know, and so I feel like, too, it's important for women like the women in this collective who are really doing the work of like tapping into the femininity, but also not excluding humanity from the conversation. And men are included in that conversation. Yeah. You know, (laughs) it's it it goes with the saying, um, in order to heal the world, you have to heal yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you start to want to raise your vibration in a way, you're going to emit that, you know, you're going to attract that, you're going to give that and and you're going to love more because you're loving and accepting yourself more. And like, even in finding a mate and finding a lover, exploring like, what is it that I actually want? And is it because I've been taught this or is it because like I'm seeing you in a way and showing you love in a capacity that like I would only want to receive it because sometimes I think we ask for things without actually, re- actually really um, actualizing what that means to embody it all the way through. So when you have a collective of people where you're on the same mindset and on the same thing, like a, when it, when you receive it, you know, it's like in, from a gentle, real, true loving place and vice versa. And it empowers <clears throat> you to continue to do that walk through your life that way and it's true like what are we doing like are you healing if you in it like even if you're not publicly doing like if in your everyday actions you're not trying to embody someone else in it you Mm -hmm. know like how are we going to leave the world if i can't like caring about your own health and your own shit and your own bank account and your own healing Mm -hmm. yeah 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 Yeah. i've also realized that relationship in all forms be it romantic platonic family friends whatever are actually some of the greatest like places for learning I feel like through my relationships with other people and how I relate to other people is how I learn everything we learn we learn ourselves as we relate to other people different versions of ourselves come out based on different people yeah and it's necessary sometimes to meet certain people specifically for that lesson for you to yeah. grow and sometimes we'll meet people very similar because there's a lesson that you're supposed to evolve and instead of looking at it that way then you're looking at it as something else you're hating it like I was I hate that this fucking guy I was dating was really hurt has it hurt it was hurting me like it was I've been hurt on the inside about it and I turned my th- told my therapist and I was like I had to stop I had to start looking at it differently because I was like, why the fuck do you see thinking about this scammer, bitch? (laughs) What the (laughs) fuck is wrong with you? Literally, I was like beating myself up for it. But it was because I wasn't looking at it correctly. Like I that was that lesson for me at that time. And the lesson in that is like, why did I feel so connected and why I I feel so hurt about it? And that is really why it's profound. And something is pulling me to it because there's work that I need to do. Mm, You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so instead of looking at relationships, all of them that way, you know, like just people that you can dispose of or whatever, or people who've hurt you. But a lot of times all of that hurt, all that pain, the trauma that people cause you is so that you can evolve to be the person you're supposed to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. And our relationships are often mirrors in a lot of ways. And a lot of times where I've had a hard time with somebody or I didn't like something about somebody, I had to really think like, actually this person is reflecting something within myself that needs a little bit of addressing. Mm. Yeah, I think that's very true, actually. I'm, I'm thinking about someone specifically that I've been... <laughs> I was, was like, I just, I just had an epiphany. Mind. I was like, is that why he, that nigga annoys me? I'm like, because I do that shit, honestly. I don't want to have to deal with it because I want to be the only one that gets to do it. Oh, I've been there. You know? Like, oh, my God, yeah. There. I'm big on that. Like, I don't want to yes. date me. I don't want to date <laughs> right. that, but I get right. to do that. I can do that. You stay in your lane. Yeah. Oh it's What the I fuck? Wow. Well, there. Yeah. Oof. I mean, and, and, and in ways, like, I don't do that for sure, but then there's still those ways, and that's why this is life, and this is why we're all still a work in progress. No one's got it figured all the way out. We're, mm-hmm. like, just... I don't know. I feel like honing in on certain parts of us throughout our journey in life. And I mean, I don't know if there's ever like 
I show up and I say, I'm healed, everyone. It's Hello. never going to happen. Hello. Yeah. Guess never. what? It's my initiation day. I'm healed forever. I'm Buddha now. <laughs> like, while like living, that's not possible. Because everything is changing yeah. all the time. Yeah. We're in the metaverse. We've been there. We've <laughs> the been metaverse. in the metaverse. We have been in the metaverse already, y'all. But we're here <laughs> again. Here we are in this extremely, like, there's a cosmic shift happening. I think, I think in 200 years, they will look back on this time and we will be in the history books of like, there was a shift that happened during this time. There was a pandemic. There were all these things that changed. A, a conscious a like evolution, revolution of like Even women. Like, yeah, yeah, women yes. and how Spirituality. men are, want to yes. be more vulnerable maybe. And just like, yeah, like transparency, over transparency. Like actual, it just, it's just, it's all changing. So I don't think that there's ever like this place you land on. I know I was having that, like that thought about fuck, like, and that's why you'd have to just enjoy it. Yeah. I was going to be doing this all the time. And that's why you just have to enjoy it. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) I feel so strongly about that because I also can recognize in myself when you're talking about being serious, I can definitely relate to that. And I don't actually think that I'm a serious person, but I can definitely come across as a serious person. Even Balanced Black Girl, as much as I love it and as proud as I am of it, is a little more stuffy than I would like because that's just kind of how it's evolved to be. Mm. And I would love to also show that healing and these things can also be fun. And Mm. there can also be play and you can laugh through it and you can enjoy it. Because so many conversations, and I think so many conversations, especially in our community, are just so centered around all the things and all the ways we suffer. And that's Mm. real. Mm -hmm. But we can't only focus on that yeah well it's uh, healing is about the pleasure baby let's be honest like healing is sex (laughs) you know like can be yeah yeah, it is it's it's it it, it births something new you know and 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 it's about being childlike it's about going back to that place that you that you existed before the world imprinted on you and put gave you trauma and and you loved from this place you know without condition and that is truly what healing is and people take it so seriously and have to go do this and do that but well, like you, it's like people uh, it's because people feel like they have to show up as whoever they've been showing up as oh, so yeah. like if t- tomorrow you wanted to like start posting yourself dancing around the internet like dancing around your living room on the internet i don't know if you do that but i'm just saying like <laughs> i would, would embarrass myself but see so you would feel know. embarrassed when maybe that's really what you do and that's actually what you want to exude you yeah. know what i mean that's actually how i want to be perceived that's how i feel yeah. why hi, why but, you know but like we it's hard though because yeah. it's like is that how i feel do i have to do that in order to like prove to someone that that's how i feel be, then you start getting in your head right, like, if you're me yeah. and you're I, like, <laughs> you I really can't. If you do this, everyone's gonna think so you're looking maybe. for attention. Are you looking for attention? Don't do it. Don't no, do it. Don't do it. I'm like, should I? Uh, do I look pretty? One. No, I don't look pretty. This is stupid. Never mind. Just fuck the whole thing. I know. Is this vain? Yeah. God. Is, is this, this important? Yeah. Or is this important? What are people gonna yeah. like? Right? Or right. is this important? Yeah. The other day, you guys, I was sitting in the kitchen. Someone was talking to me, and I was literally about to post this picture that I posted with me in Orlando. I don't look cute. I was early in the morning. I was like, is this necessary? The lighting's bad. But I've caught myself, mm-hmm. like my body was tensed up as I was like looking <laughs> looking at the picture and then I was like bitch relax your body yeah I was like what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the internet just made me fucking I was literally in the kitchen like <laughs> what the fuck is going on but we don't really like evaluate how much the thoughts give us tension in our body and like oh my gosh. what it, what it looks like doesn't matter mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nothing like how how do you feel? You know, that pleasure, that like gauge of feeling good is like our instinctual place to go. But we're not used to like coming f- like moving from that space. So when we do get in that pleasure or that silliness, we like we've been so used to taking ourselves so serious that it feels like uncomfortable and that people are going to be looking at you. But in fact, the whole life hack is fucking let that shit go. Yes. yes. Feel childlike, scream, loosen up, be like, bitch, why yeah. are you tense? Yeah. <laughs> like, ask ah. those questions. Like, be curious. I'm like, who am I? Like, even when I'm recording, I'm like, you're moving a lot. I'm like, I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, what the fuck, bitch? Just chill out. And like, I think that's the thing. Like, everybody needs to chill out. Everything is, nothing is like linear or serious or adult or childlike. If you need to heal by having a, platonic threesome with your friend after a goddess retreat that's what the fuck you need to do and talk about it whatever it looks different for everybody and really the healing comes in 
not judging how everyone else's healing looks oh, yeah. like, but just encourage for them to do that shit. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you do the same shit too. Yes. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. If it's uncomfortable, it's probably something you that like we need to face. And we probably do need to do that. Whatever. Do that thing that you're like, let me just do it. Fuck it. Oh. <laughs> I know I cared. Oh my God. They liked it. Wait, <laughs> wait, they said me too. I mean, that's essentially like what, our, like what all of our, like why podcasting has led us to like where we are. It's mm-hmm. because it's that one person that said, Oh my God, I feel that way. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh my God. Like I dance around my apartment naked on the, on Thursdays after I drop my kid off or <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like I masturbate to relieve stress too, you know, or like, this is my life hack or, you know, this is what I'm working on. So It just, it feels good to be amongst women that understand that. And I love you guys. I love you. I know we just met. But I I love you too. I love this conversation. I do. I'm glad you came. It feels very like on time. Oh, but we have a card. Okay. I don't don't want me to cut up. I love you, Debbie. I love you. I love you. I'm really happy that we met. I think we're we're the water you've been in search for. I know. (laughs) It's what I need. This is what we all need. Yeah. This is what we all need, like real vulnerability and love and like safe spaces to share it with, mm. you know, and sometimes you meet that person that day and then you have, we, we do this a lot, <laughs> thank God, but. I mean, anybody, I mean, I feel like some of the most like vulnerable, sappy conversations are with girls in the club. <laughs> oh my God, for sure. Because you're drunk if and you've, you've finally let your guard been down. been <laughs> to the bathroom at the club and met and made a new best friend. So many you best friends. what a same day vulnerable conversation right. looks like. Right, Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Um, have that conversation. Make contact. Be s- smile at that girl in the coffee shop. Make a friend yes. if you need to make a friend, girl. I, I'm the bitch. I was walking by someone in New York, and she was crying on the foot on the steps. I was like, "Are you okay?" She's like, "Yeah." I was, like, I was like, I almost was like, "Do you need a hug?" And the nigga I was with was like, "Let's go, <laughs> <laughs> bitch. This is New York." Why are we more inclined to like make eyes at a guy at the coffee shop than a girl that we think is cool? We just want to say like, "Hey, what's up?" To like, we're more like, we mean more be like. That's how we're trained. We're conditioned. We're I con- also like, I don't know. I also feel like if I get rejected by, by a man, a w- I'm like, oh, whatever. But if I get rejected by someone I want to be friends with, I'm like, oh. Like, <laughs> it's like oh, a little bit. That's more. Bitch. She wasn't cool anyway. What the fuck <laughs> it hurts more versus I'm like, man, you know. I yeah. Know. I think like having a l- low expectations, but being open to the yeah. endless possibilities yes. of just saying yes. Yeah. You know? And if it doesn't work out, like, all right, bye. Yeah. <laughs> um, today's tarot card from Les was the devil. Yes, sorry, Mom. <laughs> Shout out to uh, <laughs> Mahogany Tarot for these bomb ass black and brown cards. The best tarot deck. They are. They're like the land. original. We finally, it only took us four years, three and a half years to find the tarot deck we've been looking for. This is the one. Do you realize? This do you realize how long it took? You know what? I do we have a deck up here and we don't even touch that shit anymore. It's I just know, there. I know. It's just there. So we need to just throw it out. I know. I love those pictures. It's. I'm still so, I feel so torn about it. I need to meet Alice. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do. And I, I saw a deck on my on my altar today and I was like, I need to throw that away. I do not identify with that. But maybe <laughs> I should gift it to someone. But yes, we have finally found our deck and it's from um, our tribe member. So I'm... Um, that feels really good too. Shout out to Kashira. Shout out to Kashira. I love her. Okay. The devil. So, uh huh. This is this interesting. This word was coming up, but I didn't say it. Upright, it's shadow self. Mm. The shadow work. This is like really like, you know, the stuff people don't want to really do outwardly. Mm-hmm. Um, attachment, addiction, restriction, sexuality. So I guess the devil is maybe like what we would uh, traditionally think as darkness or bad or what has been traditionally been th- thought that way. Mm-hmm. And the devil card shows Baphomet. Is that his name? Baphomet? I don't know. You know, Satan. Mm-hmm. Or the horned goat of Med- Medne- Mendes, a creature that is half man, half goat. Originally represented the balance between good and evil, male and female, and human and animal. Wow. However, more recently, this figure has been linked to the occult and has become a scapegoat for all things considered evil. Mm. Hmm. So... That's not scary at all. No, I think it's <laughs> like terrifying at no, all. No, I think it, I, I think it's saying a lot. I think no. it's saying like, how, look how the world has created this false narrative about this about a, this. about the darkness about and, sex. And earlier we were talking about questioning why we define things mm. as good or bad. Mm. Yes, this is so fucking on point because I'm a witch. <laughs> um, yeah, and like that, maybe it's not bad. You know, maybe it's necessary. Like you have to have both. 
I was having this conversation again with my friend Ashley, and I was saying how they are they are protectors of evil, and we need them. I know that's not a popular thing to say because everyone wants to live in a world of immense peace and love, which I still think that is a possibility. But how would we know peace without darkness? And darkness also doesn't mean negative either, because literally life is born out of darkness, the womb. Like we are in dark. <laughs> in the dark and then we come to the light but I think people have obviously villainized it but I also do believe like you need to have both you do yeah Mm -hmm. balance Mm -hmm. the yin and the yang um the devil card represents your shadow or darker side and the negative forces that constrain you and hold you back from being the best version of yourself Mm -hmm. you may be at the effect of negative habits dependencies behaviors thought patterns relationships and addictions you have found yourself trapped between the short-term pleasure you receive and the longer-term pleasure you experience just at the just as the lover's card speaks to duality and choice so too does the devil However, with the devil, you are choosing the path of instant grat- gratification, even if it is at the expense of your long-term well-being. In effect, you sold yourself to the devil. The devil card often appears when you have been tricked into thinking you have no control over your shadow self or these negative forces and that you can never break free from their hold. Mm. We're literally just talking about all this stuff. Mm. That's crazy. And yeah. it's, it's it literally, it m- couldn't be more on time about our conversation about balance. Mm-hmm. Your podcast is called the <laughs> Balanced Black Girl. Um, and also just that, like, these ideas that we've held about ourselves that we're, you know, working to release and... And, and finding each other to yeah. do so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how, like, the natural force will always work in favor of that when you're doing the work. You'll mm-hmm. find the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's a testament that we just have to say yes and just do do the thing and... Even if it's uncomfortable, do it fine. Do it in spaces where you feel comfortable, you know. And just like every time, like these conversations align, this you know these divine guests align, these cards align. I think we're gonna start doing tarot after the conversation for this reason, just to see how it lines up. Um, I think Erica and I have really. Uh, transcended this brand because of divine alignment and our our continued understanding of what it looks like but everybody listening wherever you are wherever you are in your life at what point you listen to this episode also know that this is not by uh, accident and whatever you took from this today it's absolutely the answers that you've been seeking so um, I hope it meets you right at the right time in fact I know it will so sending you lots of love and your duality and your shadow work Yes, yes, a word. Love it. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Where I can know. our people? What were we gonna say? I hope to see you at the Good Vibe Retreat. Yes, oh my gosh, I would love that. Please yes, come. Tell me when and where. Please. I it's need a really, in my life. girl. It's. Have you been on a retreat before? No. Yeah, oh, you'll love it. This you'll is love. so. It's very special. Mm-hmm. Like it has like so little to do with us and everything mm-hmm. to just do with the. The, the the environment the yeah. women that are called to come the yeah. the alignment the, the divine women that alignment. decide to come yeah. like every group was like oh my god this is what this is it this yeah. is this is perfect right here it, it's literally the embodiment of exactly what we're discussing it's divine alignment and community healing on a high level mm. and with like aligned women just like you're listening like when you decide to make that choice to go whenever you get to come it's always you're with the exact the right group it's the the environment is sacred it's very 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 powerful so yeah and it's luxury luxury and it's fun and it's the very uh we are curated bitches we're very curated (laughs) bitches it's very plush it's very fun it's very childlike it's very sexy Mm -hmm. and it's very weed friendly (laughs) amen (laughs) um where can the people find you yes you can find me my podcast balanced black girl wherever you're listening to this you can find it Uh, new episodes every tuesday uh i'm also on instagram i'm at balanced less and then we have at balanced black girl podcast um I'm hanging out. And make sure you go check us out on her podcast. Make sure you go rate and review her podcast. Make sure you go rate and review our podcast because it is really important. I don't think y'all know 
it's really important for black creators to get reviewed on yes. these algorithms, on these platforms. And women and black creators yes. to be recognized mm-hmm. yes. on a on a scale. You do have to just do the free thing by rate and review us. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. free 99. Yeah. And we would greatly appreciate it. Just scroll all the way to the bottom. Just do it. You'll see when you get there why I'm telling you this. Don't wait. Do it now while you're on a high from the episode. Just say your <laughs> true feelings. Be vulnerable in our rates and reviews. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want more episodes, we have bonus episodes on Patreon. Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash good moms, bad choices. We have lessons up there. We have um, just very personal shit up there. Should we just don't go, you know, some of this shit we brushed over today, the deeper shit is over there. <laughs> um, you also get access to our close friends, which is kind of popping. Yeah, we're kind of, yeah, we're hosing the close friends. Anyway, um, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.